a lot of folks have noticed the numbers have changed. Uh, back in 2003, this mausoleum was vandalized, and they broke into the mausoleum and they took Mrs. Bacon's spine and head, skull, excuse me. Um, it was reported that she was a witch, and there, I mean, it's just rumor, and they think some kind of group broke in and picked her skull and her spine for some kind of ritual. That's what they think. There's no evidence of that. Yeah, they have fun. never found, though. They have never found her skull or her spot. Well, whoever did it went through a lot of trouble to get it done. That's yeah. right. Because the door locked. Yeah. Yeah. Don't play the marble slab. So, ignore the fact that I'm looking at the ghost hunter t shirt because I'm blending in people. Um, <laughs> so, we, we ask a little bit. When you said that uh, the skull and the spine had been taken, I'm throwing the earth legends. Oh, okay. So, uh -huh. Why did they blame it on it? Oh, I mean, is there any kind of I think it was just pure speculation. And it sounded good. So they never, like, found it? They never found it. They never, yeah. They don't know who did it. It was in November 2003. If you Google it, you can find the Gazette articles on it. Um, one of the most bizarre crimes happened, like I said, they Google out this mausoleum. Um, and as Kate said, they had to go through concrete, and they were here a while mm. to get to it. But they only took the spine and the skull of her, not him. So, but again, and the rumor was that maybe she had practiced, practiced like, traps and back, so it made so connection. They wanted right. to get her skull and spine for their original So close so connection. Exactly. But again, it's an urban legend. Right. And everything know. written about her during her life is positive. Then. Yeah. It sounded like she was a very average Victorian woman. She was headed to church goer. Yeah, I mean, you know, they're so. Now they did go on to tell us that across from this area, there's a Jewish section, and the headstones are these big marble balls. And they said the witches like to sneak in here and bury their bodies underneath there because of the energy. So these witch stories are pretty deep here. Well, the problem is, is with the Bacon story is uh, there was a Mary Bacon that, that uh, was accused of being a witch um, back in the Salem witch trials. And it was a very famous case. And they basically just transported that legend onto this Mary Bacon. More good research at work. Very good research. Let, let's look at some more fun uh, research going on here. This is the Bacon crack. Right there. Let's go crap out. You can hear me, can't you?
Were you able to kind of get the gist of that? Because of FCC regulations, human beings can't cuss on the air. I guess dogs can. But <laughs> they confirm it by saying, if you're there, cuss. Um, how many of you know about audio pareidolia? Okay, so need I say more? Um, you're you're going to hear whatever you're expecting to hear. Well, and now on their little forum they have, we've got people that went with their own ghost boxes, and now they're talking about what responses they got. I'm going to be nice and skip past this because of the time and the fact that it says nothing. I'll just let you know that right off the top. But um, they ask it to cuss, and of course it does. And then they ask how many of you are there, and of course it tells them, which it really doesn't. But uh, we sent a report off to the Benevolent Society. And it was bigger than that. We didn't give them a laminated card. Actually, it was a lot smaller. It was like this big. Well, yeah, it was really that bigger. <laughs> but we hand delivered this thing, brought it down, sat down and explained it. And they said, we really need to get this to the city cemetery manager, because he's the one that's in charge of all of these decisions. We just we help clean it up, we help restore things, but he's the deciding factor. We never heard anything. So we decided to contact him directly, which we did, and uh, wrote him a nice little letter, basically the same one that we wrote to the Benevolent Society initially, but also excluding the problems, or including the problems with the tour. And we gave him two weeks to let us know what the decision was, mostly because we were in a hurry to talk about this and schedule the time to get it short. So, he almost immediately sent back an email stating that sent the leaders of Pure Paranormal a copy of your findings and ask, sorry, have asked them to reply to me in writing their explanation of the allegations. These aren't allegations, we've got it on tape. Uh, they have been banned for after hours until I have satisfied that they are a reputable group and I don't follow their website. Well, the interesting thing about this is Pure Panic had started running to everybody they've ever done an investigation for asking for reference letters. And I know they got one. So after the two week period that we uh, kind of gave them, he wrote back saying uh, he can't control what's on their website, but they've been banned until further notice that if they show up after hours, they'll be cited for trespass. So we made sure to send off a really nice letter to the mayor saying what a great guy the city cemetery manager was for banning them and that they needed to be aware of this. This was also emailed off to, well, a version of this, off to all of the city council members. Three of the city council members and the mayor both responded with a thank you. So at least they know about it. But are they really banned is the question. On their website now, yeah, they, they've gotten clever. Since they know that we're on their trail and we're watching every move they make, they've decided to make everything they do secret until you've signed up and paid. Then they'll reveal where they're going to be next. So anybody here in Colorado Springs that would like to do a little extra sting on them, you know exactly how to do it now. Now, we were talking about their tech guy. He's the one that was... Uh, being begged for when asked about what, what Milagos was, what EMF is. Well, very recently, the group has yet split one more time. So what we have now is Colorado Paratech has become its own nasty little entity. But if you read their statements, it's the same thing. Nonprofit organization. The only difference is they use state-of-the-art equipment and proven scientific methods. <laughs> now, the big question is, does it really matter? You'll listen to this. This is a video posted on YouTube, and the first thing you're going to hear is the date this was recorded. Sorry. 
August 14th, 2011. Long, long after this was going on. And this is a film I didn't show you the cemetery. So he has just admitted they're going to go back there one night. Guess what's closed at dusk? So we have absolute proof here that because people are pushing these stories, the cemetery is haunted. They're actually posting that they're going to go break into the cemetery after hours to do their investigations. And this is long after they knew what was going on with us. The new stuff. Now, I don't know how many of you heard about the news story yesterday. There was a gentleman in Clifton, Colorado, that was fired from his job because he was doing a bit of air guitar uh, to try to win concert tickets from a radio station. And uh, he was filmed gyrating and everything over this, uh, this grave. Now, the grave was not even uh, used yet. I mean, it was, there was nobody in it. Uh, just a liner. It was just a liner at this point. He was fired, and he is now facing charges of desecration of venerated objects. Um, so there wasn't even anybody in the grave. How much worse is what he did than what Pure does on a practically weekly basis? But is it illegal? Well, we'll let you interpret your own way here that uh, Desecration is, and it means defacing, changing, polluting, or otherwise physically mistreating in a way that the defendant knows will outrage the sensibilities of persons likely to observe or discover his actions or his result. So let's ask you, <laughs> how do you feel? How do you feel about this? How do you feel about what, what happened in this cemetery if it had been at uh, your loved one's grave? Is there, is there any, any emotion that comes up at all? Uh, it's, it's, really it's annoying. I work by, I worry about the people that are trying to do it. Exactly. So they don't come back and say. <coughs> right, right. Now, to be perfectly honest, a group of skeptics and atheists are, are not the best people to try to get sympathy for a graveyard. Uh, <laughs> but I'm sure that a lot of you can, can understand how this could cause some outrage, and it is disrespectful, not to the dead, but to the living. Yes? Have you guys tried to get local news coverage about this? As a matter of fact. <laughs> <laughs> is that your next slide? Uh, no, actually, what was happening during lunch, we were in the room over there being interviewed by a local station. Uh, what's the station? Uh, 13. KRDO. 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 Yes, and they'll, they'll be showing the piece uh, this next week. Now they, try to get back to us. They so. did interview the, the, what am I trying to say? They will the board. And they the, the, will the manager. manager of the cemetery. And I guess he was uh, as nonspecific as he could be, but said that they have been thrown out and are not coming back. Uh, but that's all he was willing to say. Pure Paranormal has not been able to be reached for comment. And uh, it's been several days now, and they, they won't respond. So, question. What is the term comment? Uh, $25. How much? $25. I paid in all change. Yeah, just to be a turkey, but I'm changing. <laughs>